Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to our series of Microsoft Graph and in this video we are going to talk about Microsoft Graph Explorer. So this image that you see right now is a screenshot of Microsoft Graph Explorer that I have captured and as you can see that this console gives you the option to type the API or the address of a specific entity type or object for which you're looking for some information. Then you also need to sign in with a specific account which has the privilege to query this particular API. Then it will also show you some of the sample queries which you can use. And this section at the bottom will show you the response of the query that you have made. Now, if you're watching the series from the beginning, in the last video, we have discussed briefly what exactly the purpose of Microsoft Graph. What is the purpose of Microsoft Graph API and what kind of data can be queried? Whereas the agenda of this video will be knowing what is Microsoft Graph Explorer, which accounts can be used to sign in to Microsoft Graph Explorer. And the last thing we'll talk about is the kind of requests that can be made in order to query or update any object type. There is a certain amount of understanding which I'm expecting you guys to already have and that's moreover related to how application works in Azure AD. So there is a lot more content which I have already covered and it has been distributed in two different playlists. The first one is the SaaS playlist wherein I have talked about software as a service. And then there is a specific playlist that I have created for protocols wherein I have discussed how OpenID Connect and OAuth work. Now the reason behind why you should know this because Graph Explorer is an application that uses OpenID Connect to interact with Azure AD for the authentication. That's the actual purpose. And the last thing we'll talk about is the consent framework that how a specific account gets the permission to access a particular API through Graph Explorer. So that's the reason why you must know all these three line items. Now, let's say if you want to know how exactly application works and you want to know each and every option that's available on portal.azure.com, then you can go ahead and watch Azure AD Advanced Troubleshooting Playlist. So let's proceed by knowing what is Microsoft Graph Explorer. In a nutshell, in the easiest concept which you can understand, it is an application. It's a website that you are accessing and it is querying a particular API. So in a nutshell, it is an application. This application can be used to query the data which belongs to the variety of service which Microsoft has to offer. Some of the common one can be Azure AD, Exchange Online, SharePoint Online or Teams. But what we also know that depending upon the role of these services, they hold different set of information. Likewise, in Azure AD, you have users, groups, policies, applications. In Exchange, you have mailboxes, emails, calendars. In SharePoint, you have sites, you have folders that contains some documents. And when it comes to Teams, you have chats, channels, and different other applications which are integrated with Microsoft Teams. But when we talk about the admin perspective of managing all these services, we have discussed this in our last video as well. There are different consoles which you can use to manage each of these individual services. But that's not how things work with Graph because Graph is a single API exposed by Microsoft to access any information that belongs to these services, right? So what we will be doing is we will be using Graph Explorer console to access one single API, which is graph.microsoft.com forward slash v1.0 with the respective address of a specific entity type or object type. And then we will get the respective information. Now, this is exceptionally easy provided you know all the logics, which I'm trying to explain in this particular video. If you come across any questions, please feel free to ask in the comment section. It's a free forum wherein you can get all your questions addressed. So the first step to access Microsoft Graph Explorer is that you have to navigate to this particular link, which is developer.microsoft.com forward slash ENUS Graph Graph Explorer. This is the link which will give you the console for Microsoft Graph Explorer. Then you have to sign in with your Azure AD account because 
Microsoft Graph API is an API that's been protected by Azure AD, right? And then you can use a specific query to get some information which is related to any kind of object that you want to query. So let's proceed by knowing how exactly we can query and how exactly we can use Microsoft Graph Explorer tool. And for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my browser where I will be signing with my global admin credentials. So this is my browser where I'm going to access Microsoft Graph Explorer console and all you have to type is Microsoft Graph. That's it. Now you get this link which says developer.microsoft.com. Just click on this link and you will be landed to the console from where you can start Graph Explorer. As you can see, I'm getting this option of Graph Explorer. I can either click on this or as you can see, there is one more option which is getting listed here and that is new Graph Explorer is now in GA. So let's click on this new one so that we should get the most updated experience. Okay. Now, if you guys remember, this is the same console with which we started our video. The first section is asking for you to type the address of the API that you want to access then what kind of request you want to do, whether you want to get the user with the respective attributes or whether you want to update a specific attribute. Then this section that you see here is actually asking you to sign in so that you can query all this information. Now, the reason behind that is because Microsoft Graph API is protected by Azure AD. Now, there is one more statement that I have used in this particular video, and that is Microsoft Graph Explorer uses OpenID Connect to interact with Azure AD. Now, let's see how that happens with the help of a Fiddler trace. So, what we'll do is we'll also initiate a Fiddler trace to understand how things are happening under the hood. Now, I'm going to click on this option which says Sign in to Graph Explorer, and I'm going to use an account which is a global admin. So this account, which is graph at the red concepts work.com is a global admin of my tenant. And then I'm going to type in my password and I'm going to click on sign in. Now the expected behavior is that I should get a consent prompt because if you guys remember in a nutshell, Microsoft Graph Explorer is also an application which is trying to access some sort of information that belongs to my user object, which is graph at the rate concepts work.com. Now, since I'm a global admin, if I select this option, I can consent this permission for the entire organization, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to click on accept. Now the expected behavior is we should get landed back to our page, which is the same page of Graph Explorer, as you can see. And the moment I will click on run query, I'll get the results, which will be related to my user object. Now, the reason behind why this is working as expected, because there are certain permissions which are granted by default to any application that exists in Azure Active Directory. Now let's come back to our Fiddler trace and understand everything, what exactly happened under the hood. So the first thing that we have done is we went to Graph Explorer and then we clicked on sign in. And then we got a prompt of Azure AD where we have initiated the authentication process. So as you can see, the first request itself has reached the common V2.0 endpoint. That means that belongs to our new Microsoft identity platform, which will be using incremental consent. Okay. And then we sign in with our username and password, and then we landed back to graph.microsoft.com. Okay. Now, when it comes to checking the token, what we can do is we can choose a response which graph.microsoft.com has sent or acknowledged to the user agent and that can be this one or this one and the moment we click on this one we can see that there is a token which exists and as you can see this is the authorization token which is getting used okay so if i'll copy this token and then if we go to jwt.io or jwt.ms whichever application you use to decode a token we should get the claims inside this particular token and that is something which will actually prove that microsoft graph explorer is in a nutshell an application that exists in azure 80 
and as you can see that this token is intended for graph explorer that means the app display name is graph explorer now what i'll do is i'll go to portal dot azure dot com and then i will go to the enterprise application section and then we will see that whether there is any option getting listed as graph explorer or not so i'll go to azure active directory and then i'll go to enterprise application section and then as you can see i'm getting this option of graph explorer that means what this console that you access in a nutshell is already an application that exists in your Azure Active Directory. All the consent process works as expected as it is a part of all these modern protocols which are OpenID Connect and this is what the entire user experience will be. Now if you will look at this particular section there are certain sample queries which you can do. Okay, now I will be covering most of them in a separate video altogether. But just to show you guys that as of now, I have just queried my own user object. But the fact is that by default, every user has this privilege to query their own user object as well as other users that exist in Azure Active Directory. Now, the reason why I have said this because as you can see right now, I tried querying all the users but what I'm getting is authorization request denied but if I click on modify permission there is a particular permission which I can grant and which doesn't require any admin consent so let's say if I give this permission which says user read basic all and then if I'll click on consent I'm again getting a consent prompt now all this is happening because of the MSAL libraries or the Microsoft Identity Platform being used, which works on incremental consent. Okay, the moment I will click on accept, I will again click on run query, and as you can see, now I'm getting all the other users. Now, this is something which I have shown in my previous video as well. All you need to know is the respective address that you have to reach, and then you will get the results which you were expecting for. Okay. Now, as a user, since I'm signed in with Global Admin, I can get any of the attributes updated. But this is something which will be the entry point of our next video because in that video, I'm going to tell you how these API operates, how these HTTP requests works, what exactly happened or what you need to do to perform a specific task and how exactly this entire permissions and everything works when it comes to knowing how graph explorer works as an admin just sign into this particular portal with your account try accessing any api or any query if it fails for some reason you'll get a message here or you'll get a list of all the permissions that you need to access that particular information and then you can choose all these sample queries which are listed over here and access the respective set of information to show you one more example let's say I want to know what all emails exist in my mailbox that has high importance as you can see I again got a prompt which says access is denied but if I try to check whether this request needs a permission which requires admin consent as you can see it's a crosshair it means i can consent this particular request so what i'll do is let's say mail.read is consented as a user and again i'm getting a consent prompt right so i'll click on accept and then again i'll click on run query and i will get this information the fact is that as of now there is not even one single message that exists in my mailbox which has high importance that's why i'm not getting any result here so this is how the exact graph explorer works it uses open id connect in a nutshell to contact azure ad because azure ad is protecting this api okay and if you want to know who all has consented this particular application then just click on this permissions tab and then click on user consent and you will get all the details that which user has consented what kind of scope now as you can see that for sign in users i'm getting one user because as of now i have only used this particular user for the first time to access the graph instance of my tenant 
So I hope this video has given you some idea about how exactly Graph Explorer works. So let's talk about a quick summary of what all we have discussed in this particular video. So we started with knowing what is Microsoft Graph Explorer. Then we have checked what kind of accounts can be used to sign into Graph Explorer. If you don't have admin privilege in your directory, you can still sign into Graph Explorer and you can query your information. If you are an admin, then you can approve any sort of consent and get the respective information. The last thing that we have discussed is what kind of queries that can be done. Likewise, if I'm querying some information, I can choose get. But if I want to update any information, it should be patch. Now, this is the entry point of our new video or our next video wherein I'm going to talk about Microsoft Graph API. That means that particular section which starts with graph.microsoft.com forward slash v1.0. We are also going to talk about the versioning and we're also going to talk about how exactly any request that you are making what kind of permissions it requires, what changes it does to an object or to an entity. So if our channel is helping you to learn something new, please feel free to subscribe. And if you think this can help your friends or your colleagues, please feel free to share this with your technical community. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time.